Hello, my beautiful love goods, and welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to yet another EA house renovation. So, we are in the beautiful world of Evergreen Harbor, my favorite world in The Sims 4. You know how much I love and adore Evergreen Harbor. But here's the thing. This is the, the this is the, the kicker. Is this house right here. I just want an explanation from EA. I need a written statement on why this looks like this. Um, so, first of all, the Tinker family lives here. Um, I kind of get the vibes of what they're going for. You know, they found this old house. They're trying to fix it up. You know, but let, let's just let's just drag it through the mud a little bit. So, first of all. As we can see, let's look around. Let's look around for a second. Um, we got the beautiful Evergreen Harbor. Look, I love its simplicity. Look at those homes. They're all simple. You know, you got some apartments. You got some homes. You got like the old rail station, you know, the canal. Um, a beautiful, beautiful town. And then you have this monstrosity. Like, uh, this doesn't match the vibes at all. There is no, it, there's nothing about this that fits Evergreen Harbor. I don't know why it's here. And like, across like why would they build a manor and have this across the street like explain to me explain to me why but you know in true fashion to this series uh we're not here to demolish it and start over no 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 we're here to renovate what's here and uh, but before we do i'm gonna show you all give you all a little tour so it ain't much i'm gonna tell you right now but first of all another thing this is the front of the lot technically like when you go to here and save it to your gallery, look at that. Look at that. Look at this nonsense. Y'all explain to me, EA, you, like, I, I just, I, I need y'all to come back and just do a little refresh, just a little fix of this lot, please. <laughs> cause that's, that bugs me a little bit, but, um, cause this is the front of the street. This is the road. Look at this. This is the back street. Like, what do you mean? Anyways, unless this is the front. No, there's no way. <laughs> Anyways, let's look inside really quickly. First of all, the roofing, garbage. What is this roofing? Um, I know it's supposed to be like it's uh, like a scattered place, but what is this? What is this? And then interior wise, it's it's whatever. You know, it isn't so, so bad, honestly. I think that if I had stuck with this original floor plan, it probably wouldn't have been bad. But I'm not a big fan of it still. Um, also, the thing is, too, uh, this I've had the feeling that the Tinker household, you know, they really wanted to, like, you know, renovate this house and fix it up and be eco-friendly. But it doesn't look like they're trying to be eco-friendly because this home is not off the grid. So when you see me jump into uh, the actual speed build portion, you'll notice that I made this off the grid. But yeah, you can see it's pretty gloomy. It's pretty dark. It's not ugly, but it's super minimally furnished. Um, yeah, there's, you know, the little girl's room. There is the parent's bedroom. I'm assuming this is their bedroom. Yeah. And then they have like a little, I guess a little off like, like workplace work room in here. They have a bathroom. They have a fireplace, which again, that is super industrial. And then they have another office. Why do they have two offices? I mean, this has a computer, I guess. And then there's this big room that's just an entry room. They have a living space right here. They have a dining. They have a kitchen. They have a little bathroom. And then they have, that's it. This weird alcove back here. I don't understand. Like, this part really confuses me. Why? Because if this is a manor, you would think it was built properly. But is this supposed to be a dilapidated manor? It doesn't look like it's supposed to be. It just looks like it's poorly built. So yeah, let's let's go ahead and jump on into the into the renovation of this build and uh, uh yeah, I'll give you my two cents there. Here we are into the renovation portion of this build and uh you know, first thing uh, wow, well, that roof. <laughs> the first thing was that roof. Um I don't understand why it was so so complicated. Like why why was the roof like that? Like, what did they do? Because the house is a pretty simple shape. I did adjust it because it was not symmetrical. And that was driving me a little bit crazy. And, you know, most of these renovations, I try to, you know, make sure that I keep with the original plan. Absolutely not. This, this is mm -mm. the original. If it was an original plan, that was good. I would have stuck with it. But I was absolutely like, I was like, no, mm -mm. cut it off, ruin it. It's, it's, it's done, but it had potential. 
I'll give it that. And maybe that was the point. Maybe the point of this build was to renovate it. It wasn't supposed to be just lived in the way it is, which, you know, sometimes that's true. And obviously, I would obviously hope that that's true. Um, but the first thing I did in this build was just kind of fix the structure. Um, I redid the roofing. I redid like the symmetry. I added some dormers. I just, I made it look nice. Um, it took me a long time long time. So just get yourself situated, relax, get yourself hydrated and all that good stuff. Um, because it's a, it's a, today's a little bit of a longer speed build. I'll also be a little bit honest with y'all. Um, once I got to the exterior part after doing the interior, I was done. <laughs> I was done with this build because it took me a while. It took me, well, Let's just say it took me longer than I usually la take on a build uh, just because I have a pretty short attention span. Uh, my ADHD does not like long projects, um, at least not like this. Like I like a long project that's like in little pieces. I don't like a big project that's in a big piece. And that's what this is. So um, it took me about three hours to do this renovation. All in all, I'm pretty happy with it. But um, towards the end, if you can tell that things are not as coordinated, um, it's because I'm done with it. But you get the point of it. That's I, that's really the whole idea behind this build is to just have fun. And by the time I was not having fun, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna just gonna make it look okay and then finish it. So yeah, first thing I did was I was like, you know what, I want to make this house. Um, good for the environment. So I do make sure to include like flooring and wallpaper and just random like doors or windows or whatever, things that are eco footprint green, because there is quite a few things in The Sims 4 that aren't just in eco lifestyle, but in other uh, packs as well that are counted as eco footprint green. And so um, I made sure to include that. And like, like this brick, for example, is actually eco footprint industrial I'm pretty sure um, I could be wrong but I think a, a good a good amount of the bricks are like that not all of them but most of them and I was like you know what we can't have this we can't have this so I I do switch it to um, a nice rivery like like that, that that river rock stone texture but also uh, really quickly before I get too far into this I tried going with an all-black aesthetic at first and I was like no that's not the vibes that's not the tinker household they they're, they're like they like light colors they like mismatched stuff i know nothing about these sims by the way i don't even know their names i just know there's the tinker household and i was like that's just the vibes i'm gonna go with is just light and mismatched and pastel and cute and just fun and yeah it this house went through it okay i went through it the house went through it my computer went through it like it, it was a big project honestly i feel like Weirdly enough, out of all of the uh, EA house renovations that I've done, this one may, may be the biggest one, honestly. Like size-wise, not really, but definitely mentally, it was kind of like crazy. I really really was happy that um, those windows from Romantic Garden stuff pack uh, fit so nicely with this house. Um, I thought it looked really, really cute. I always love using those, but I never really get a good chance to use them. And they were perfect. I just, I was like, they need light. They need windows. They need something because there was so few windows in this house. It was so dark and bleak. And you know what the irony was? They did not, it was on the grid. I made it off the grid, like I said earlier. And so literally everything in this house, when it came to like electronics, there really isn't any electronics. Um, like all of the kitchen stuff, the plumbing, the lights, it's all off grid stuff. So um, it's got, a, there's a, there is a ton of candles. This house is a fire hazard. If it was, was real life, there is so many candles lit in this house at all times. Let me tell you, um, real life, no, no, no. But in The Sims, yes, it's okay. And you can kind of see upstairs this floor plan, uh, which it was giving me some weird issues, which, okay, so this is something I notice a lot with pre-made homes. Um, I don't know if it's just like a glitch maybe because I don't know. But basically it like, you can see there, I'm like having to re like redraw the room, which I was struggling with as it was, but I had to like redraw the room because it was like, 
counting another little section of the floor like as a different room. I, I, I don't know. It just, it was bothering me so much. Um, and I didn't understand why it was doing that. So, um, it took me a little bit to kind of get it fixed, but I basically made this a really blank shell and just redid it. That's really all I had to do with this because, um, in this series, I do really like to make sure that the, um, homes are kind of the original layout, the original floor plan, the original shape, because it's, I'm here to like kind of work with what was given to me. But some of these builds are not fixable, <laughs> at least in that degree. Um, some of these homes just, they need total redos. Um, the essence of the house is here, um, but it's totally redone. This is like the glow up, okay? Um, it's a total renovation for me, and I'm actually, I'm, I'm glad that I'm doing it this way um, because there has been some builds in the past that I'm like, wow, this floor plan, it's, tra it's a tragedy. Um, so th like this floor plan wasn't even that bad and I still redid it. So yeah, here you can see um, the like the rock texture on the bottom floor. There's this other one that's like a yellowy texture. That's from Eco Lifestyle actually. And it's a bill discount item, I believe. And uh, both of them are Eco Footprint Green. Th same with the roofing. I think it's also Eco Footprint Green. Um, there is a few roof, like different roofing textures that actually um, are bill discount items or they help produce water. Like the grass one helps produce water, which I think is so cool. I definitely need to play with ever like eco lifestyle a lot more. I think, um, to, to be honest, y'all, I've been really thinking about rebooting rags to riches hard mode. Uh, it's been a, it's been a year. It's been a year since I played it. Um, I didn't really have any like direction that I was going with that at all. I was just kind of playing willy nilly, which was fun, but I still felt kind of like aimless with it. So that's why it kind of, it's why it kind of went away for a while. Um, I don't know if I will bring it back, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it because just imagine imagine um like I, I i can just imagine playing in like a tiny home and like them starting from scratch i would obviously be playing august my my favorite sim my, he's my favorite sim i've ever played i love him so much um i would obviously be playing august and jeffrey of course i would I, I could not abandon them and start from scratch i think i will have them start from scratch sort of um, maybe they live in another world, possibly. I, I don't know. Maybe they do something different. I'm not really sure. If y'all have any suggestions, if you're, if you were a rags to riches viewer last year, um, if you have any suggestions about what I should do and what direction I should take, I hit my desk. I'm sorry. Uh, just let me know in the comments. It would be really, really beneficial, really helpful for me. Cause I, I'm kind of feeling aimless with it. It was a lot of fun too. Like it was so, so much fun to play that series. Like it was kind of wacky and all over the place. It was challenging. It was kind of unpredictable, but I, I really enjoyed that aspect about it. Cause I, with building, it's pretty, you know, like, Oh yeah, no, I'm, I'm renovating the house. I'm building a tiny home. I'm doing an apartment renovation. Like I, it's, it's the same stuff over and over sort of. Um, it's a different concepts every time, but it's the same structure. And like, I, really think that I needed to like break it up a little bit because then I won't be, I won't feel so, uh, you know, samey all the time. I kept, okay, back to the build, back to the build. Sorry for rambling a little bit, but I kept the floor plan, uh, pretty open downstairs. Um, I was like, you know, I don't love these really tall walls. I do make them medium wall height instead of tall wall height. I don't love the tall wall height. They are too intimidating for me. If I was building like a really big house or like a castle or a mansion or something, I would do the tall wall height, but I couldn't do the tall. It was just, I just think that smaller sized rooms, if you use tall walls, the proportions feel weird. It feels too tall, too open, too just, it makes it almost feel smaller in a weird way. So yeah, I do switch it up later on. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the, I, I was unsure of what aesthetic I wanted to go for with this renovation. And, uh, so I did kind of go through a few things here and there. I was actually considering making it just a normal house instead of doing like a off the grid, but I was like, no, it's gotta be off the grid. It's in, it's in Evergreen Harbor. I don't know why side tangent. I don't know why, but every time I want to refer 
to either Evergreen Harbor or Eco Lifestyle, I flip them in my head. I don't know why. Like, I'll just be like, oh, I'm playing with Evergreen Harbor today. No, you're playing with Eco Lifestyle. And then I'll be like, oh, we're in Eco Lifestyle. No, it's Evergreen Harbor, the world you're in. <laughs> I don't know why I get so mixed up with that. Anyways, back to whatever. Um, but yeah, you can see here with the kitchen, I did figure out a, an aesthetic. I was like, oh, I can just do like rustic mismatched you know, vibes. And uh, so I made sure that the kitchen was, you know, that vibe first. And uh, the kitchen is actually where it originally was, which I was kind of shocked. I always thought that that was such a weird spot for the kitchen, but it actually works. I don't know. I, it it kind of worked here. Um, this is at the point where I was like, I don't like these tall walls because putting, you put it cabinets, you put wall cabinets in a room with tall walls. Where do you put them? Do you put them low so your Sims can reach them? And then there's like so much space above them. Do you put them really high where they realistically could not get to those cabinets? Like, tell me. Because either way, I hate it. I don't know. That just doesn't make sense to me. Like, if it was like, I don't know. Sometimes I wish you could lower the ceilings in these rooms. I know that that does not make sense. I, or I, I wish each room could have a different wall height. That would be really fun. That would be so fun. I mean... Theoretically, I could just increase the platform in there. Like I could section the room off, put a platform in there and then raise it up really high. And then you can just have to like walk up some little steps to get to the kitchen. And then it's kind of smaller that way. You could do that, but that seems kind of complicated and, and kind of convoluted. And I can already say it's probably a little glitchy. I'm not going to lie because that's just how the nature of things are. The kitchen did come out really nicely though. Um, I, I do realize too, cause I did do a, uh, like a proper dining room space. Um, I also put a table in the kitchen to eat at. So they have two tables to eat at. So, uh, they have choice and you you know what? Your Sims are probably going to choose both at the same time because they're probably going to get up and move around, especially if they're talking to someone. Like, let me tell you, multitasking in The Sims 4 is sometimes a, it's a gift, but it's sometimes a curse. Sometimes they will do, they'll just get up and not sit in the same spot that you want them to. Like, imagine having two Sims and you're like, ooh, I want them to be sitting at the table together eating and they refuse to st sit still. They will constantly get up, move to a different you know, side of the table. They will just, I don't know. I don't know why they do that. I think it's just because they can multitask that the uh, free will just autonomously just like makes them do that. I don't know. It's, it's kind of, it's funny as hell. Let me tell you, like this, that's that, that kind of stuff makes the Sims 4 charming in its own way. We'll at least look at it that way. Um, but uh, yeah, I do like the little dining space. This is kind of where I kind of picked up my groove with this build. Um, I did lose the groove at the end because that landscaping I was like absolutely not I do not want to do this anymore but uh no I really enjoyed this part of the build though because I was like ooh mismatched thrifty vibes yes you know me I love doing some mix mix and matched uh just furniture and styles and just I don't know. I just enjoy it a lot. I, I like mismatched chairs. I like, you know, higgledy piggledy rugs. Um, I love all the different styles and textures and it, and it in and of itself, all of them together make their own style, which is like that thrifty kind of bohemian. I, I don't really know if that's the correct term to be perfectly honest, but it's, it's just a vibe, you know, it's, it's a vibe. And what I really, really liked about this downstairs area is that, you know, you have your kitchen, you have your dining space, but then there's like a little in between lounge. Cause like there is a main lounge that you walk into, like as soon as you walk through the front door, it's like a nice living area. Um, but then there's like this little mini side lounge uh, off to the side in between the kitchen and the living space um, where there's like a piano and just some places to sit. And I can just, I can just imagine them entertaining some guests and the, like the, maybe one of them plays the piano or something. I, I don't know. Um, but I realized I was like, Ooh, I really need to go in and light up the kitchen because it's kind of dark. And, uh, the, I will tell you, um, when it comes to lighting in the Sims 4, when it's off the grid, um, it's obviously going to be a lot of candles, but there's a lot of like table candles and like small stuff. There's not a whole lot of like floor lamp kind of like off the grid candles or whatever. Um, there's the candelabra from the base game. It was the brightest one. I used it a lot in this build, I'll be honest. Um, and then there's not very many ceiling lights either. So I had to use the one from Jungle Adventure. Um, that one is 
it's nice. It's kind of simple, which I'm happy about. Um, I can't really think of the logic um, behind it. Like, oh, how do they light those candles? <laughs> like, they're kind of high up. Um, so I don't know, but it's The Sims, so we don't have to pretend. But I really love this part, though, because I used a, like, a little one by two like room there with brick on it to kind of section off the uh, dining space from that little mini lounge. And I put a, I put a, I put a fireplace, which that will, um, it is considered industrial, those fireplaces, but it was just the one. And I think everything else kind of cancels it out. So, uh, but I love the fireplace so much. It's from the paranormal stuff pack. I don't think I've ever gotten the chance to use it and it fit perfectly in this build honestly that minty kind of minty seafoam green with the like light yellows and like the little bookshelf pieces on the side it fits really really nicely with the overall style uh that this house was going for and um it just i don't know it, it was nice too because you have a lot of like the beige like flooring and wallpaper and it was just a nice like bright little touch i really like the living room it's not centered around a tv because they are off the grid they do not have a tv um there's not any any le electronics in this house there's a tiny little radio where that little lounge is and that's it that's the only bit that i think is not off the grid also with this build by the way um i made sure to not use any money cheats so um that i don't know it's just a little bit more realistic i just used what funds that they had which they had thirty thousand, i believe to start out with in their household funds and then you know add that on to the you know cost of everything that was here um, it gave me quite a few simoleons back because there was a lot of landscaping outside that I was like, this is unnecessary and kind of ugly and I'm gonna redo it anyway. So, um, I deleted it all and got quite a bit back from it. And honestly, um, this house is pretty loaded. I think I had a little bit less than 13,000 simoleons left after I, you know, was completely finished. Um, so yeah, there's still room for more. Honestly, I could have went through the house and added way more clutter, but honestly, I was, <sighs> this house kind of burnt me out a little bit. I'm not going to lie. It was a lot, but yeah, you can see it's really pretty on the interior. It's very golden and lit by all the, it's probably like a thousand candles, <laughs> like not really, but it's hundreds of candles. I feel like, um, at this point, but yeah. And then there is like the main living space. And then I decided to give them like a little work room. Um, this is just like a room where they can like do their crafts and, you know, freelance work. Maybe I just put some skill building items here and there. I did a little candle station and easel. Um, I did do a workbench, but then I switch it to the uh, jewelry making station from the, uh, crystal creation stuff pack. Um, I thought that was kind of a nice little thing to add in because you know their last name is Tinker. So maybe they tinker with jewelry. I don't know. I haven't gotten the chance to really play with that a whole, whole lot because there was a lot of bugs and glitches with it um, when you had your Sims wear the jewelry. Jewelry. It is so hard to say that word in my accent. Um, but no, like I avoided it because of that, but they fixed it since. So uh, yeah, I, I definitely need to play with it a little bit more because apparently it's overpowered that stuff pack, like the stuff in the, like the, the, like the buffs that you can get from the jewelry and like the crystals and all that is a lot. Let me tell you, but yeah, I'm still just working on this little work space. Um, when it came to selecting the furniture, I tried to like, think about like, Oh, would they, w would this look like something they could just get at a thrift store or make by hand or find somewhere random, like secondhand or just on the street even and like upcycle it? Like I tried to think about it a little bit like that, um, at least for some things, not everything, of course, but for some things, because let's be honest, um, in my rags to riches, hard mode, uh, let's play series. Um, one of my restrictions was anything that I use to decorate the house with had to be something that either August crafted or he found. It could not be bought from just like the buy mode section in the, you know, the game itself. Like I couldn't just like be like, oh, he needs a refrigerator. I'm going to buy a refrigerator. He had to either find one or craft one, which by the way, there's not very many things that you can craft in the game, uh, like, like refrigerators. Um, so, um, there is some mods out there though, that I did use that gave you a whole lot more things that you could craft. Um, 
I don't know if it's been updated with the recent patches of The Sims 4, so I don't know if I will use them if I use the if I bring that uh, Let's Play series back. But um, yeah, there is quite a bit that you can make regardless. And uh, yeah, it was it was really fun. It was really fun because it was always like, ooh, what's he gonna find today? Because I would make him dumpster dive like every single day in the beginning, and I would just be like, okay, is he gonna find a sink? I don't even is it? I don't really remember. Was it that we were struggling to find a toilet? I think that was one of the things that I struggled to find. I, I think, honestly, to get inspired to do that, I may go watch this, like, go back and watch the series again, um, just myself. I probably should do that, honestly. That would be a good way to kind of get back into it. I did add a laundry space. I'm sorry. Okay, if you don't like doing laundry in The Sims 4, just delete it. Just delete it. Um, but I was like, you know, it, it kind of falls in line with the whole being off the grid. They wash their clothes by hand, and then they hang them up to dry outside. It just makes sense. You know, it feels right, you know, especially with, especially with like evergreen, like eco lifestyle. I did it again. We're about halfway through this video. So how about we all take a little bit of a breather. Um, if you're working on a Sims build or a drawing, or if you're just relaxing, um, let's get up, let's stretch for a second. Let's go grab some cold water or just some kind of hydration, some kind of beverage, uh, whether it's, oh, you know, my favorite beverage right now is the severed lime sparkling water by liquid death um i absolutely adore this brand i am hyper fixating over this brand um, i bought an eight pack at kroger and let me tell you the severed lime she is the best one it's delicious it's crisp it's refreshing it has little to no sugar it is amazing i highly recommend it but yeah go get yourself a drink and a snack if you need uh and uh we yeah let's let's do that together okay we are hydrated did you get a little drink a little snack let me know in the comments what you got honestly let me know it, I, you know it does help engagement on my channel if you comment um but yeah let me know your favorite beverage and your favorite snack um and yeah, uh, I just got me some more water because uh, I I talked about this actually in my last video. I quit coffee. I quit caffeine. I quit a lot of things like when it comes to drink things. Um, I, I've just been drinking water and liquid death pretty much uh, on the occasion. I'll have some oat milk because, uh, you know, I'm gay. But also, um, by the way, uh, side note before we get too far into being tangent mode, uh, this bathroom is real cute. I'm really happy with it and I kind of popped off with it. It's a laundry room slash bathroom slash storage at linens. I don't know. It's kind of rambly. H rambly? No, I'm rambly. It's kind of higgledy piggledy and I love it. It's completely off the grid also. Anyways, what was I about? to say was um, I actually have a pork roast cooking away in the crock pot as I speak. Uh, it's been cooking for several hours. Like it's been four hours. No, it's been five hours. It's been cooking away in that crock pot. And y'all, I tried a little taste of it because it's done. It's done. I'm just waiting. I'm just letting it kind of sit in the warmth of it um, until my boyfriend gets home so we can eat together because, yeah. Um, but I tried a little bite because, you know, you got to taste what you're cooking. So you make sure it's got enough seasoning and salt and all that good stuff. Oh, my God. It's so good. It's the pork roast, it's falling apart. It's so tender. It's so juicy. It's flavorful. It's a little salty. Um, I've got like some potatoes cooking with it. And I didn't have any other vegetables. I know, I'm bad. Um, I didn't have any other vegetables because I just forgot to get some. Um, and oh my God, it's so good. Honestly, I feel like if I had put like celery or anything else in it, it wouldn't have been as good, weirdly enough. Um, I don't know, but it just, oh, it's so heavenly. And that's all I'm gonna think about for the next hour because I'm hungry and it smells so good in this house. It, it's, oh, I can't, I'm, I'm just gonna talk about it for the next 15 minutes. This is where I started to get a little burnout because the downstairs loved it, popped off, incredible. Uh, this upstairs room, I kinda liked it, it was nice. Um, it was just another little lounge space because I was like, I don't know what to put up here. Um, so I just made it another little like loungy space and yeah, I don't know, I can just imagine, you know, they go up here and read or something, maybe, maybe you know, downstairs is a bit more more like rustle and bustle because it's you know a big open space but this is a little bit cozier it's a little bit more quiet maybe um i should have put a fireplace up here too maybe 
but uh, I don't know. I just didn't bother. Um, I can also imagine too that the daughter, because uh, they have a child sim, um, their daughter probably comes up here to hang out a lot and maybe she has friends and they hang out in here as well. Um, I don't know. I just like to think of that. And like also, you know, once she gets to be a teenager, she'll maybe have her friends over even more. And this can be just like her space possibly. I just went with a lot of warm colors, like a lot of warm, bright pastels. That's kind of the vibe. It's just a warm, warm, bright pastels for this house for the majority with hints of green, like a seafoam green tinge here and there. Um, but it's very feminine, very light, very soft, very cozy and pretty and just I, I do love it. I, I, as all in all, I know that I said I was like pretty burnt out and pretty like whatever about this house. I still love it. It was fun. It was great. Um, the master bedroom, I just took the same color schemes and just kept on going. Um, that's pretty much what I did was I did like pinks and yellows for the rest of the build basically. So, uh, yeah, not just, just a lot of mismatched nonsense with pinks and yellows and so many candles. Let me tell you too many candles. Um, like just imagine how warm it must be in this house. Like with so many candles burning, maybe that's how they keep their house warm. Maybe that's why maybe they're just like, okay, the candles keep our, keep us warm in the winter. So we don't have to use our fireplace. I don't know. What house should I do next? with this series. Cause honestly, this one was a no brainer. It was a no brainer. Cause girl, it was bad. Um, but what other house should I do? Preferably small. <laughs> I was thinking of doing Rendell Rose and Willow Creek. You know, that one random little pinkish kind of reddish house that has a weird roof in the front. I don't know. Um, something else, some, something like that. Um, there's that one house that's called Riverside Roost. Have I done that house before? I don't remember. Uh, there's also the BFF's house. Ooh, the, BF, the BFF's house would be a contender, honestly. It's not like ugly, but it definitely needs some, you know, TLC. You know, it needs some, it needs some, um, you know, the TLC channel. <laughs> no, it needs some tender love and care because it's got, it's got some issues with it, I think, too. Like a lot of those really old base game homes. But uh, I don't know. Let me know. Let me, just let me know in the comments uh, what uh, my next one should be, honestly, because I really enjoy doing these, but I don't want to do them too much because it can get a little like tedious sometimes. I will say, though, this one was fun to do because it was off the grid. It was a different way of like approaching the build. Um, I was, I wasn't, I was trying to be a little bit more thoughtful being like, oh, you know, they can't really have like an office because they don't have computers because they're off the grid, you know? Um, Cause you know, technically, technically you can have like electronics and all that good stuff when you're living off the grid. Um, but you have to have some kind of power to support that. And um, I thought, you know, the best way to avoid that issue is to just make everything off the grid. Um, but it was it was really fun, though, to kind of think about it that way and, you know, go about the build a little bit differently. And I definitely want to do this for a tiny home. Also, like I've never really done it for a tiny home, I don't think. I'm um, like truly off the grid, like I don't know. It would be it would be really fun. I did do another little bathroom upstairs. It's a smaller bathroom. It's pretty simple. I really just put it there for convenience sake. The main bathroom is downstairs, but this is just like a quicker bathroom that they can use. Um, and then I moved on to the little girl's bedroom. I actually love this little bedroom. I was kind of confused and unsure of what to do at first. I was like, ooh, I could go with like a little bit of a green aesthetic, but I wasn't really loving that. So I did switch to a yellow aesthetic. I really enjoyed that. I love yellow. Um, however, yellow is just too much for me. I will be honest. I think yellow is a beautiful color. I love seeing it in small bits. Um, but for me personally, yellow is quite overstimulating. It's a very bright, vibrant color. Um, my favorite colors are blues and greens because they are the opposite of that. They are, you know, calming, especially like a nice, deep, earthy green, um, like, or even like a deep phthalo green. Um, if you look up phthalo green, it's it starts with a P it's P T H A L O or something like that. Um, but yeah, look up phthalo green. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's like a cool tone, deep green. It's, oh, it's so lovely. I don't know what 
is wrong with me, but I always get onto the topic of shades of colors. In the last video, um, <laughs> I was talking about shades of purple, um, but today I'm talking about shades of green. And thalo green is beautiful. Hunter green is beautiful. Um, I do love sage green. Sap green, if you know what sap green is, if you're a painter kind of artist person like me, um, sap green is beautiful too, um, most of the time. It's just a really lovely, like, planty green. Like, it, it's just imagine looking into the forest on a sunny day, you're gonna see sap greens everywhere. Yeah, I just, I love all shades of green, um, except for chartreuse. Is chartreuse a shade of green or is it a shade of yellow? I don't know. It's a, it's a little too yellow. See, that's what I'm saying. It's the yellows. Maybe I don't like yellow. Maybe I like it in concept, but I don't actually like it in real life. I don't know. Let me know what y'all think. But yeah, we're slowly but surely getting to the end of this field. <laughs> All right, let me tell you. See, this room, I was like really loving it. I was like, this is super cute. I'm really into it. But it was after this room, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> I don't want to do this build anymore. <laughs> this bedroom, I did it twice because I did a guest bedroom also here. I was like, oh, maybe I can make it into another like little office space or something. But I was like, no, I'm just going to make it into a guest bedroom and keep it easy. This first go of it, I was like, I hate it. I, I was like done with it. I was tired. Um, I took a break. I like closed my game, went and played some uh, Legends Arceus for a little while, came back and I was like, okay, I'm gonna just do the guest red room again and then just make it simpler. <laughs> and I did like the second go around a little bit better, but uh, yeah, you could tell, you can tell I was getting burnt out. Let me tell you, these big builds like this, I can only do so many of them. Like, oh my goodness. Uh, but I was like, oh, I can make it into a sewing room. No. I was like, no. <laughs> so, um, which sewing, that would be a lot of fun to have in The Sims 4. Not gonna lie. We had it in The Sims 2, right? I, I want it in The Sims 4, like really bad. That would be so cute. Such a nice hobby. But yeah, just kept it simple in here. Um, it's a guest bedroom, so it doesn't need to be super personalized or anything. So I just put a bed, a dresser, a rocking chair, some candles. You know, that's all they need, right? Um, at least I would hope so. So, um, and yeah, that was really it, honestly, for the interior. Um, I had to just finish up the exterior a little bit here and there, but I did quite a bit of that off camera, not gonna lie, because I was getting a little bit burnt out. So, uh, yeah, uh, but I'm gonna finish this up right here. Uh, there's also a little storage room here as well. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and let's just jump on into the tour of the build, the finished build. I mean, here we are. Finally, <laughs> finally, we're here. The light, we're not, we don't just see the light at the end of the tunnel. We're actually at the end of the tunnel. But here we are in the uh, the finished build. Um, it's very pretty. I did a lot of this off camera. I'm not gonna lie because let's be honest, it took it, my brain was like I need to just focus, and recording weirdly does not help me focus. So here it is in all its glory. I put tons of like trees here in the front just to kind of add some color. Um, and then the back, I did a little bit. I didn't do a lot in the back. I just put some terrain paint, some, you know, a few flowers, a couple trees, you know, the works. I did a little bike parking area. Um, Could have put some more stuff out here, but I was I was, I was done, y'all. I did do a little gardening space as well. Uh, this makes a lot of sense, actually. I'm really happy that I put this here. Um, and then the, you know, the laundry space. We saw that earlier. But yeah, let's go ahead and take a look on the inside. Um, we did just go through the whole build, but um, ooh, that was very fast. I'm sorry. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump on in. Um, if you are motion sickness, I do apologize. So uh, I'll try to go kind of slow with this, I guess. But um, here is the living space here. I absolutely adore the looks the looks in here, the view in here. It's very like cozy and warm and just soft and stunning. And just, there's all sorts of patterns, but they don't overdo it. Um, I love this little lounge space with the pretty piano. I can just imagine they found the piano and like fixed it up or something. And then we have this nice little uh, dining space. Pretty simple. I love the werewolves table. I love that, you know, maybe they were like, oh, we just found this table outside and uh, it was kind of broken, but we just prop it up with this old book. I don't know. And then the kitchen in here as well. I like the kitchen. It looks very usable. It looks very practical. Um, it's not the best layout. Um, to be honest, the best layout is like a triangular layout in that you can draw a triangle, like a pretty even triangle from like the stove, the fridge and the sink. But you know, it's, it's fine. It does the job. 
Then we have the bathroom. I love this bathroom. It's super cute. There's not any curtains, which is problematic, but they have hedges. So, you know, they have some privacy, right? Um, love that they have like a little laundry space where they can like fold clothes, maybe iron or something. I don't know. Um, and then of course they have their bathing stuff. They have a, a bathtub and a shower separate here. Uh, they're both off the grid also. Uh, they look super cute. Um, and then of course, you know, the tried and true off the grid staples, this sink from laundry day and that toilet from vampire game pack uh beautiful beautiful and then we have their like um studio space i guess we can say because there's like a painting area there's like a candle making station we have a crystal making you know jewelry station there um, and then we have a little drawing table for the little girl i thought that was good before i move on though what are the names of these sims Olive. Oh, I love that her little, her, the little girl's name's Olive. And we have Yasmin and Tina. Tina Tinker. Tina burnt her. Tina turned her. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Anyways, so let's move on. Uh, here is the upstairs as well. We have the nice master bedroom. I actually love the vibes in this master bedroom. I was going to make the walls pink. And honestly, the blue is my, much nicer. It's just so much more calm and like soft in here. We have the upstairs lounge as well. I think it looks, it's pretty minimal, but I think that this is not the main, you know, place for them. So they keep it pretty minimal up here just so that it's not so crazy. And then the little girl's room, we have Olive's bedroom. I love this room. The yellows, the pinks, the greens, the different colors, the little cats. I just love it so much. It's actually super cute. And then we have the guest bedroom. Uh, that's really it. Um, so we also have a little bathroom here. I'm sorry if the camera is kind of a little bit a lot because it is for me. Um, here is the bathroom. Nothing crazy. Um, and that's really it. I can give you a little uh, overview. Uh, this is the second floor. And then here's the floor plan. And then here is the first floor on all of its glory. Nice and open and big and spacious. That is pretty much it, though, for today. I hope y'all enjoyed today's EA house renovation. Do let me know in the comments what you think, and uh, let me know any suggestions that you have for the series, any builds, any homes that you see. Is Maybe there's some builds on the gallery that you want me to try out. Uh, do let me know in the comments. Uh, but yeah, that is pretty much it. Thank you all so, so very much for watching. Stay weird, and beware of the Nargles. Bye, y'all. <laughs>